Hi, John Rhodes here and welcome back. A big hello to all my subscribers and thank you to those of you that have just subscribed. If you haven't or if you've only just found the channel, why not hit the little subscribe button now and you can be assured of lots of interesting endo content over the months to come. It was great to see a few of you face to face at the recent Langham Endodontic Study Group meeting. It's always good to see the subscribers in the flesh and I hope you're enjoying the videos. In this video, we're gonna be looking at locating canals. We're gonna be hunting for the MB2, but the case has a little twist because there's not just one, not just two, but three MB canals. And that's all very well. You may be able to find the orifice, but what do you do with it then? So I'll also show you how I negotiate these canals, prepare them ready for disinfection and obturation. Hope you enjoy it. So we're going to root fill the maxillary right first molar. The tooth was referred in because the general practitioner couldn't locate the root canals. The tooth looks fairly innocuous on the radiograph, however the mesiobuccal canal does appear to be moderately curved. As you'll see, we're in for a real treat with this one because not only are the canals a lot more curved in the buccal palatal direction, but there are actually three mesiobuccal canals. I have removed the restoration and now we're looking at caries at the base of the access. I'm going to remove this using a large LN burr and then refine the cavity with a long tapered diamond. I've perforated the roof of the pulp chamber in the region of the palatal canal and I can now sink a non-end cutting tungsten carbide endo Z burr through this perforation and lift off the roof of the pulp chamber. Here I'm using an endodontic probe to remove calcification from the orifices of the root canals. Preliminary coronal flaring is carried out using a ProTaper SX instrument, but you could also use Gates Glidden burrs or other rotary files. The MB2 is approached from a palatal direction as it often converges with the MB1. Conservative coronal flaring has been carried out on the four main root canals. It's now time to estimate the working length of the root canals using an electronic apex locator. A file, in this case a size 10 flexor file, is introduced into the root canal and then gently wound down to the zero reading. In this case it's going slightly beyond and so I'm backing up until I get the reading correctly at zero. Having created a glide path it's time to taper the root canal and in this case I'm using the smallest Wave 1 gold instrument. Here I'm preparing the MB1 canal and it's a sequence of preparation, three steps, irrigation, recapitulation with a size 10 flexor file and then irrigation back to some more tapering. 
In each canal, it probably takes me two or three stages to reach the full working length. So it's now on to the MB2 canal. In this case the canal is very fine and highly curved and so I'm using a C pilot file which has a narrow taper and is stiffer than a flexor file. I'm gently using a watch winding motion to wind the file down to the full working length. I'll then use some low amplitude filing actions to create a glide path. Several of you have asked me to show some uncut footage of the preparation sequence and so here it is, I'm going to be preparing the MB2 canal. We've already worked out what the working length is using a C plus pilot file and I'm now going to reproduce that to create the glide path with the size 10 flexor file. This footage has not been edited and so you're watching me in real time prepare the MB2 canal. So I think I'm all done and I take a quick scout of the pulp floor using high magnification. I can see the MB1, the MB2, the distabuckle and palatal. 
But what's this? Could it be an MB3? So yes, it turned out to be an MB3 and I prepared it in exactly the same way as the MB2. When I'm drawing back on the irrigating syringe, you can see that the MB2 and MB3 are converging. The MB1 is a separate canal. Everything was obturated using a vertically compacted gutter perker technique. So here you have the preoperative radiograph showing the slightly sclerosed and moderately curved root canals in this maxillary right first molar. This is my post-op radiograph showing a good coronal apical seal and a core buildup ready for crown prep. The distal angle view clearly shows the curvatures of these canals in the plane that you cannot visualize on a radiograph. Well, thank you for watching to the end. I do hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and stay tuned because there's going to be lots of interesting cases coming up. Don't forget to ask questions if you want to. I do try and answer all the questions that people answer. It does take a little while, but they're all there and you should hopefully get an answer within a few days. So see you again soon and whatever you do, enjoy your endo.